Saints, I'm going to make an observation here. First of all, please make sure you're staying in the Word, that you're following Jesus Christ. These are the last days. You need to stay covered by the blood of the Lamb. And uh, the labors for the kingdom of God is very short. Amen. I'm going to make an observation here. When you call out a Muslim, right, and you say that they're false, the religion's false, you know, and Islam is not a peaceful religion. The Quran says, kill the Christians and Jews, the people of the book, and kill the infidels. Don't show them any compassion. Don't yield to them. Wage war wherever they are. Drive them out. Ambush them, and so forth. Cut off their limbs. It says all the horrible satanic stuff. And then you say that Islam is false, and Islam is taking over large parts of the country worldwide, and it's Bible prophecy anyway. Why would a Muslim say that you're being racist? Now, now here's how retarded this sounds. Because racism is not a religion. That's, that's dumb, okay? Racism is an, a national, an ethnicity, an um, ethnic group, okay? Um... Your roots, where you come from. So you could be African American, Asian, Hispanic. That's what race is. It does not mean a religion. So you Muslims, if you feel that you're being demonstrated, uh, you're being bought, you're being um, labeled a particular group, or you're being uh, people are being biased towards you, you have no one to blame but yourself. Okay, because ISIS, and I pointed this out before, ISIS is practicing Islam as it is written in the Quran word for word. I read the Quran, and they're practicing exactly that. The Quran also says to crucify the Christians. So it's not a peaceful religion. So if you want to blame someone, you blame ISIS, you blame, you blame all these other Islamic groups that practice your religion as it is written in the Quran, and I've already pointed out, according to the Quran, if you don't practice and follow the laws, like these laws in the Quran, exactly as ISIS does, then you would be considered an infidel, and according to the Quran, the penalty is death. So, Islam is not a race. I believe the correct word you're looking for just to make sure you can grasp this and make and hopefully you understand the meaning of the word is discrimination, religious discrimination. Islam is not a race. You sound stupid when you say that and, and forgive the expression, but I'm just being honest. I get emails from Muslims saying, why are you saying this about the Quran? I'm speaking out against Islam because it is a false religion and it's causing so many to be deceived and I'm defending the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ in the book of John and Psalms says, Who will stand up for me? Who will stand up against the workers of iniquity? Well, I'm standing up for the cross. And as a Christian, if you call yourself a Christian, you're required to stand up for the cross and for the faith too. I'm just being real. Okay, so I'm defending the cross. I'm not discriminating against anybody's skin color. I'm defending the cross. This is not about bigotry. This is not about discrimination of any religion. This is straight up facts. I read the Quran and the and ISIS after I read the Quran and it's a true it's not true it's a false filth document it's a false filthy uh, doctrine of the devil but I got a legitimate translation of the Quran and I read it and ISIS and the Taliban and Al Qaeda and all these other groups are practicing Islamic laws as it is written in the Quran so that is the true nature of Islam that is not a peaceful religion. If you think it's a peaceful religion, I'm sorry to say, but you are as high as a kite. And I would suggest laying off the chronic. And I'm just being honest. I'm being honest. It's not a peaceful religion. There is no way that God would ever condone anything that's going on there. And God would never ever call himself the greatest schemer. The Quran calls their God the greatest of schemers. And the Bible calls the devil the father of lies. So according to the Bible, Allah in the Quran is the devil. 
And I already told you that the Quran says to use the Bible and the Torah to judge if the Quran is true. If you go back to the Bible to check that, it'll tell you that the Quran is false because the Quran denies Jesus Christ's crucifixion, whereas the Bible says that Jesus Christ is God and um, talks about the crucifixion. That it did happen, it did take place. So, before you say that Islam is racist, you sound stupid. You, you, know, you know, people that say this, Muslims, even non-Muslims, before you sit there and say, oh, I'm a racist for speaking out against Islam for the false religion that it is, you know, do yourself a favor and get an education. Grow a brain, because you sound stupid when you sit there and say that Islam is racist. Because racism does not mean a religion. It means a nationality, an ethnic nationality. I already explained to you what it means. I believe the word you're looking for is religious discrimination. If you can grasp what that word means. Okay? So, um, with that being said, I'm going to end this broadcast. And I also want to point out, I know you guys might think, well, um... I'm being a little bit brutal. I'm, being, I'm standing up for the cross, okay? I'm standing up for Jesus Christ. Because this is ridiculous. Iceland, the, you know, the, I was watching this video today. And um, I believe it was on RT, which is nothing but propaganda to make Russia look good. When Russia is not a saint either, and neither is Putin. But anyway, um, they, were, they were trying to put the sympathy card on how we should feel sorry for the Syrian... Uh, refugees, just trying to paint a pretty picture. When we all know that the refugees that came into these states are not all Syrian, they're different nationalities, and a lot of them are ISIS members, and they're being spread out to different countries, and they're being spread out for the purpose of recruiting. So you figure, if you have thousands of ISIS members in each country around the world, think about how much that one person can recruit. Okay? It's Bible prophecy. Okay? Um, they're putting a sob story about how Islam or the refugees are children and families and how they need a place to stay. You know, first of all, the United States economy cannot handle the many mouths that, you know, the many mouths that they plan on feeding. Over 200,000 uh, refugees went to Dearborn alone. Okay. Do your research and you'll see it's quite disturbing. Secondly, um, you know, they talk about how these Syrian refugees need assistance and, you know, how each of them are getting a thousand dollars and they're getting assistance to find housing and find a job. Well, you know what? What about the veterans? Hmm? What about the homeless veterans right here in the United States? What about the homeless families right here in the United States? I don't see Obama lifting a finger to help them, but I see him, you know, practically catering to these Syrians, giving them money, giving them housing. Man, I would come here too if I found out I can go to a country and pretty much leech off the government and go on welfare. I'd come here too. They're getting a free ride. But you have homeless people and you have um you have homeless people and you have also families that are homeless, that are starving, vets that are not getting any kind of help. And if they try to get help, they're denied everything. You know that the vets, their benefits were being threatened to cut. The government was threatening to cut their benefits if um, if they didn't surrender their firearms. I mean, this is outrageous. We need to take care of our own. We need to take care of our own first. Okay, I understand it by helping your fellow brethren. Okay, but Obama's not doing that. He's pretty much telling the homeless people here in the States, and they're on their own. They're not getting anything. So they're in the streets starving, families and veterans. Meanwhile, these Syrians get a free ride. So how, tell me, how do you think that's fair? So yes, Muslims are taking over this nation. And I can't understand why you people just stand by and don't say anything. But that's up to you. Because again, this is Bible prophecy. Islam is supposed to be one of the largest religions that's going to surpass, uh, to surpass Roman Catholicism. Christians are going to become a minority. And then, they're going to become a minority for a time. And then Christians will become the majority when Jesus Christ returns. Because even during the tribulation, people are going to see all the miracles that the saint, you know, um... The true saints of God will be performing and they will come to Christ. It's prophesied. 
So I'm going to end this broadcast and I'm going to say, look, don't be deceived. Okay, don't show these Syrian refugees any kind of sympathy. You got to be careful. My suggestion would be is to pray to Jesus Christ first. Ask if what I say is true. Pray to Jesus Christ. Because let me tell you something. You can't trust anybody. Even a child as young as 6, 7 could be a Muslim uh, extremist. Not extremist. Could be a Muslim ISIS member. They recruit kids as young as 6 and 7. You have young kids, 6 and 7, suicide bombers that already know how to operate a firearm. I was watching a video the other day where there was a 6-year-old kid who had a grenade belt around him. He was going to be a suicide bomber. So you can't trust anybody. Let me tell you something. The enemy can appear innocent. You can't let your guard down. So you don't think that ISIS has um, children, insurgents, as posing as refugees? You don't think so? Oh, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. They're playing on the sympathy of many of the West, of the Western nations. I'm not going to have that. I'm not going to fall for that. I don't trust anybody. The only one I trust is Jesus Christ. We need to take care of the people here that need help. And yes, um, do, I, do I believe if they're legitimate refugees that they should get help? Yes. But my thing is this. Why not the Middle Eastern nations absorb those refugees? Why the West? And why is, Muslim, why is uh, Obama pushing so hard for those Muslims to be here? Why? Because he's Muslim himself. He said it. He admitted it. He's not a Christian. I mean, he's married to a she-man, for crying out loud. So he's a Muslim, and he's gay. And she, Michelle, is named Michael. Look, I'm not a Star Wars fan, but I don't know if you've ever seen Star Wars. But she reminds me of the character called Chewbacca. She looks just like him. She also reminds me of... Um, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, King Kong. She reminds me of King Kong too. And I'm not trying, like I'm not trying to be mean and a racist. I'm just, you know, full of righteous anger as to how this government could bend over backwards for a bunch of Muslims. But there's starving veterans here and starving families here in the U.S. and people that are not eating and they don't have jobs. And they need help looking for a job. They need help getting housing. And he's going to help them and not help his own here. That's messed up. That's pretty cold. I mean, I, look, I haven't seen it all. You know, this nation is so done on so many levels. Jesus Christ is not pleased at all. You know, this administration, this Obama administration, really, really, really is dismantling this country from the inside out. United States is not what, what it used to be. I told y'all I had a dream that there was many um, different nationalities in this country. And it looked like a third world nation. Think about what all these refugees are going to do to the economy. They're going to take American jobs. You know, Americans will be laid off. It's too much of a strain and a burden on the American economy to feed all these people. But Obama is too brain dead to see that. Look, ladies and gentlemen, here's what I suggest that you do. If you have to arm up... You know, I support the Second Amendment rights. If I can get a gun tomorrow, I will. Okay. Do it the right way. Get a permit. Get license. Get a firearm. And keep you and your family safe. And keep you and your brothers and sisters in Christ safe. Okay. Because you think that the violence is going to stop? It's not. It's going to continue. There's going to be increased uh, attacks in the United States and worldwide. And there's going to be more aggressive Muslims in this country. I'm not saying every Muslim is a murderer, okay, because they're not. But a lot of them, more than half, have that ideology. They are ISIS sympathizers. You have to protect yourself. God requires it of you. God requires that if someone's going to attack you and your family, you defend them like David did for Israel. God demands that you provide for your family, even protect them. If you don't, that's the actual sin. This isn't good. Okay, these times that we're living in, ladies and gentlemen, are dangerous times. And I pray for each and every one of you. I love everybody, even Muslims. When I say I hate a Muslim or atheist, it's the sin, it's not the person. 
And it's unfortunate that they are deceived and they think that they're doing a service to God, but they're not. It's up to you to decide if you are a Muslim and you haven't blasphemed God to cry out for the God of Abraham, which is Jesus Christ, and ask him to show you if he, if you know, to confirm that he is the living God, which is Jesus Christ. That's all I can say. You can't be, I can't force you. Christianity does not force or impose the faith on you like Islam's do, Islamic religion does. The Christianity, Christianity is the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth, the light, and the way. Islam is a lie. And I stand by that. And I will always be a warrior for Christ.